Hello guys, welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be playing um, a wide variety and a wide number of unique and, well, somewhat unique, um, and but new decks that utilize um, one or a few different cards that were released in Brothers in Arms. Um, this is not Road to Rank 1, I've, you know, barely hit Field Marshal, um, if you want to see how I hit Field Marshal. Um, check out the Cards Top Deckers channel um, coming soon. And you can see, actually, I'm currently at 1980 because I was uh, playing uh, a couple of questionable decks right after I hit Field Marshal. That's probably the lowest score I've been in, like, over two years, something like that. Um, normally, I just get straight to grinding, but I thought I would uh, play it around with a couple of Brothers in Arms decks. Um, this is what I have. Currently, I might make more as we go through, and uh, yeah, I'll try to select one game per deck um, that either was incredibly entertaining or highlighted um, one of the Brothers in Arms cards. So currently, um, actually a lot of these decks are discard decks. Um, now, discard is not new, there's nothing really new to the discard package, but I feel like discard complements a lot of the new control options, and then um, there's also a handful of really, really terrible ramp decks um, using the new ASW Patrol, just because you are, ramp is a lot of fun with ASW Patrol. And not all of these decks are going to be tournament-worthy, the ladder-worthy. In fact, most of them probably aren't going to be. Um, however, they are a ton of fun, um, so maybe I can inspire you to uh, either craft some cards um, if you have excess wild cards, or if you have these cards already and you're not sure what to do with them, uh, hopefully this inspires you to uh, just have some fun with cards, because in the end that is what it's all about, so let's get into the games. What a performance there by J-King. J-King, full plot armor. J-King is pushing himself into the ranks of the legend. J-King is our world champion! J-King 7! What? The back-to-back -back cards world champion! Alrighty, so starting off, um, I'm playing the uh, German Soviet Pincer deck. Um, now, this actually utilizes a couple of the cards I have currently in my hand the 91st Astrocon, which gains plus 1 plus 2 every time you target it um, with a Pincer effect, and the 101st Infantry Regiment, which is arguably a better card in this deck, which is Pincer gets plus 1 plus 1 when this unit attacks, and that triggers before it actually does attack. Um, so the pincer deck basically just throw a ton of pincer cards into a deck, um, and you have a couple warp reductions to try to cheat out things early, then a bunch of uh, situational draw through units, and basically just try to out-tempo your opponent on the board. Um, th this is sort of the, one of the most basic um, new decks of the expansion, um, which is uh, why I'm starting off with it here. Uh, uh, Opponent appears to be just passing a lot, um, which is going to help. Now, there's a couple different plays. I could push Astrakhan, play 22nd. Um, this is going to get Astrakhan to the front line to potentially be buffed in the future and get me drawing cards. Um, I could also just buff it now to try to get it out of range of various things. Um, I think I'm just going to play the auto cannon, just because our opponent's passing. Um, and it's possible that they have a hammer and they want this to get pincered before playing hammer on it. Um, but any type of removal they have, hopefully this baits them into playing it on the auto cannon. I had considered confusion, but uh, this still leaves me with auto cannon on the board. And I think I'm just gonna play out some guys, so confusion still can't affect me. I get two hits off with the auto cannon plus an attack. And, I mean, can't do a lot currently. I'm going to get, like, under fire. So under fire to pin um, the auto cannon plus double sickle. Interesting. So he had the opportunity to re remove auto cannon. Um, did choose not to. I can try to just go off on Ostracon now. I don't really want to put all my pincer on it, but... Yeah, this 
he doesn't have any easy confusion targets. Um, if he partisans this, it loses the pincers, so it actually goes up to one op cost. Um, and then we'll just return to hand second confusion. Okay. If he has like a year old factory or a red banner, this could get really bad. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay. Um. Well, this will let me remove this. Um, I guess I'll just take the front line. Well, it lets me remove it while keeping on board. I guess I could have done Scherzen for a similar outcome and a slightly better board. But yeah, I think I probably should have done Scherzen instead of the 101st. Winter Warfare. Okay, that's a f fine card to see. Um, is it island defense time? We still haven't seen a ally nation. It's probably not self damage if he's running double confusion, but. Interesting. Um, MEBF 109G is also another one of those new cards. Um, with pincer when this unit attacks and destroys a unit, gain a credit, and draw a card. So, if you can get this to trigger, it's obviously very powerful. It's essentially impossible to get this tr to trigger more than once. Um, so this is coming out, this is moving up, and then I think we just want to get stuff on the board and try to keep stuff on the board. I, I should have played the shirts in on the other side if this guy's running under fire. And uh, that is true, we have seen Japan ally, so he could island defense at any point. Just heal back up to 20. I mean, this deck is not a burn deck at all. There's no burst. There's no comets, no blitzkriegs. Um, it is really just about building up a board um, and winning with said board. Oh, there's, there's some burst elements, like Katyusha 35T. Um, like, if he plays Winter Offensive here, he drops to 6. I have 3 to 4 damage in hand. Here's the Partisans. Alright. So this will return to hand. And he's not going to heal off of it. If he hits the shirts and I get to draw another card. However, this also means I get to kill the 125th. Um, ooh, that is an interesting question. Because actually, 101st on Katayusha is really good. Um, there's also the MEBF and Martyr here. Um, Six. No, there's not enough credits to do too much of a pop off here. I think maybe just minor one of first on the shirts and to kill that is the best thing to do here. Draws me a card, gets me some decent stats on board. Um, the fifth Panzer Grenadier is actually, like, honestly, kind of the backbone of this deck. Y you'd think it really would be the Astrakhan, but it's so easy to remove um, with things like Sudden Strike Hammer. Critical hit, apparently. Um, whereas the fifth Panzer Grenadier, this can start to snowball super hard if you get pincers. A lot of pincers going. Um, okay, there's. What's happening this turn? So there's going to be Nakshub. I want to be killing the unit with MEBF, so 3, 6, hit, 9, that doesn't work, um, 2, 4,
seven, eight hit, I go up to three credits. Four credits, maybe? Alright, well, we're about to find out what happens here. Um... It's been... S no, then we won't have had the credits. Now, I, I did have three credits left over, I could have played this. We don't get value out of the pincer immediately. It, there's a 272nd. Um, of course we draw war production. Well, we're just gonna play this now. Um, get the rope to go away, figure out what we're doing here. I probably should have played MEBF on the 35D instead of the Mitre here. Alright, so this is happening for sure. That does get the low roll. Um, which is quite unfortunate, so I think we're just going to trade out the front line. Oh, but that means we might have to... Hmm. I'm going to trade like this. And just buff up a huge support line, get him in the face. This does put him into island hopping range, or island defense range, I mean. Um, but he hasn't had it in a couple turns. So by putting it on the 101st, he now wants to kill the 101st to get rid of the 5th uh, Panzer Grenadier Pincer. But also he wants to get rid of the Martyr, so I, I stopped drawing cards. If he plays out more guards, stuff like that also just has higher attack. Um, KV, Night Witches, he can play out one of those. Um, so we attack face with this. So I think I can just push both of these. Pincer Ostracon. This goes face. Now I go face, wait, so if I go face here. So this can deal three to four and then this will deal three. So I can't kill him. Um, I could kill Polykarpov to draw a card and gain three credits, but I don't really have a way to use that per se. And that does heal him. So I think it's probably better to just go face. Oh, that that was actually the wrong order. Uh, whoops. Because Caddy's the one with the 5th um, Panzer Grenadier effect on it. Which means Caddy's the one that makes the pincer stuff grow. But yeah, like this is what I mean. Like We have two Ostracons in hand, they're not doing anything. I think we've played one or two Ostracons already this game and they didn't do anything. We're winning entirely just with the variety of pincer effects. Um, and they just have like very powerful interactions. Um, they can snowball on stats very quickly. Like these fifth panzer grenadiers, I think they probably gave like plus 7, plus 7, plus 8, plus 8 worth of stats. Um, this has to attack, right? Yep. So can get rid of a lot of the front line, but like, look, we still have so much stats. We still even have control of the front line, uh, plus three very powerful units in the support line. Um, yeah, I, I don't think this requires too much thought. We can just trade this out. This will give me a bunch of credits, get rid of the only guard on board. And that is just going to be game. And uh, yeah, that's the power of Um <laughs> right there. Pincer deck works really well. Here, we can actually um, take 
a look at the uh, deck list after each game, maybe. So uh, this is the deck list. You have the uh, credit cheating cards of War Production, Gaborg's Pioneer, and Axube. Um, Gaborg's Pioneer is sort of the does it fit, does it not fit. You need credit so bad in the beginning of the game. Um, the Aggro Regiment sort of a twofold. It gives you credits in the form of letting your units operate for free, but also it's a pincer. Um, and you have a couple Katyushas, just because it works really well with the 101st and the, um, well, really the, the, the sort of the upper end of your pincer, the, since they can buff the uh, stats of the Katyusha, um, which works really well at picking off units for free, like with Martyr. Um, you saw we, because war productions are only order, uh, you have to rely entirely on unit-based to draw, which, I mean, 20 seconds, Heinkel, Martyr, um, MEBF, and you saw that worked for us quite well um, in the last game. So yeah, th then you just sort of ran out the deck with solid elites, the autocan and the Yag bomber. So yeah, very good deck, um, and let's uh, get on to the next one. All right, so our next deck here is Soviet German Discard. Um, I mean, it, I think it'd be more fair to call it Soviet German Control with like a discard package. Um, Now, I might keep something like this. Oh boy. <laughs> so, uh, the reason I'm keeping Road to Berlin is if it's just a regular Soviet control, um, then, you know, whatever. I, I'll just have time to draw into uh, better cards. And if it's self damage, then um, that's going to help me quite a bit. Same reason I've kept Hammer. Well, Hammer's just sort of good into everything. So, the. The main difference um, this Soviet German control has from, say, Soviet German in the past, because I have played Soviet German in the past, um, specifically Soviet German like anti-aggro, um, using uh, like Scorched Earth, Sudden Strikes, Flam Panzers, just trying to crush decks like air. This is very different. Um, it's still very strong against aggro, but it's, it's certainly intended to. Uh, take out, um, he's got the M4A ones. Okay, well, um, <laughs> this guy's got the discard tech, I guess. Uh, this is actually a bit of an issue now. So I'm just going to hit him with the second wolf pack. Ooh. 39th Rifles. I mean, I can just take it next turn. Are you kidding me? Alright. Um... <laughs> that certainly is a thing that has happened. Um, I mean, let's just take our Chaika, get a 6-6 six, six to the front line. Not out of it yet. But um, it's certainly bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, the the main my my favorite part of this deck right now is the uh, gambit, the new Soviet elite, the five cost order that pulls a unit from the most expensive unit from both players' hands. Now I know a lot of people have looked at that card as a Machines of War, like, um, sort of cheat out something early, special assignment type of card. Western Allies is another card that um, functions very similarly. And I just don't see it as being that type of card. Um, I, I mean, you certainly can run it like that, but I just think that that's kind of a worse way to run the card. Like, I think if that is how you are playing the card, you're not getting the, the max potential out of it. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out the uh, best way to answer in this current board. I love the uh, BM thirteen nine. This is one of the. This is another one of the uh, newer cards. Well, the new cards from Brothers and Arms that I'm running in this deck. Now I'm gonna be pretty happy with uh, discarding that. So let's see if we hit it and hopefully not another supply chain. You know, that's just just how it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> I 
Well, he trades that out. Um, but if he's just going to keep those in his hand, um, it, th this little guy is incredibly annoying. Now, it's probably not going to be too annoying for a Soviets to deal with. Um, double sickle, something like that. Enemy out the gates, apparently. Um, that's certainly an option. Now, we can annihilate that. Um, I might have to. Like, yes, there's the possibility that it hits um, another supply chain. Okay. Well, I'm just going to push this. This technically trades with... Um, Well, that's certainly a card to uh, <laughs> hopefully draw. Um, yeah, I was going to say, it certainly trades with um, T34. So that, that's something. Oh my goodness, finally. All right. Well, it, this deck does not have any huge draw it, comebacks. Um... I mean, so think of it this way. This this guy, instead of having um, two less draws from his deck and, like, what, two or three cards from his hand, um, like, this guy could be... Um, what would that be? Two... If this guy didn't run his anti-discard tech... Um, he would actually have, uh, maybe I should have traded this, because this is going to be a ton of damage. Um, if this guy didn't have his anti-discard tag, I think he would have two cards in hand. Because I think he has stopped discarding from supply chain three times and then drew two extra cards. So he would have two cards in hand, and none of them would be card draw. Well, at least none of them would be supply chains. So, you know, the, we would have this board and he has two cards in hand rather than we have this board and he has seven cards in hand. Uh, <laughs> also, the cards remaining in his deck are just going to be very heavy. There's a possibility we can take him out on... Um, like, we can just try to rush him down. That's going to help. So, I, I don't think there is a red dot target. Oh, there is, the ISU, of course. Um, so yeah, we drop him to three, we get the seven, seven. And I can't, I, I think we actually won this game. There should not be a substantial amount of healing and he also has to answer the threat of the uh, seven, seven guide in the front line. Well, he's drawing. There's the ASW patrol. Hits the 1-1, one, one, and we got him! <laughs> okay. Well, look at that. Even even with the hard anti-discard, and let's let's be honest. That guy had one supply chain in his hand the entire time. He wasn't doing Betty stuff. He wasn't generating more of them. Like, I just got, like, the... What? Like, the... I mean, we only ever saw one supply chain discarded. So I suppose the first one, maybe he has two or three supply chains in his hand, and he just never played or discarded the other ones. I mean, I, I think it's fair to assume he didn't, but maybe. So the first one's like, what, like a 1 in 6, something like that. Um, and then after that, it's like a 2 in 8. So it's like a 1 in 6, followed by like a 1 in 4, followed by like a 1 in 3, followed by, I think he played a couple. Um, so then like another 1 in 3, something like that. So it's not just he had anti-discard tech. Guy was also high-rolling his anti-discard tech. Um... But yeah, uh, we still actually managed to scrape out a win. Um, I might play another game on this deck just to uh, try to show off the gambit. Um, now that you've got an idea of how the deck works, um, might go for a more normal game where we, we see the power of gambit. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'll stay tuned for the next highlighted game. All right, so here we have the next game, and we're going to just go ahead and keep gambit in the opening hand. 
Um, and because we're keeping Gambit, we can actually keep the 272nd. I'm considering keeping 39th Rifles, just because there's a couple good two drops, whether it's German Japan or um, Aggro. And then, obviously, keeping Hammer just so we don't get blown out by uh, Heinz or uh, Pinsir. And this is just never a bad card, taking out a Shitson. Now, there's a very good question as whether or not we should play this. I don't think so um, in this situation, just because it's probably discard, and there is not really... Um, oh, that's really annoying. I was hoping it was going to be a From the Deep, because um, I'd be perfectly fine throwing a Cossix into a From the Deep. For Cossix, into a uh, Careless Talk, though. Much more annoying. Here, we're again just going to pass, like, Road to Berlin is not the most valuable card in my hand. Um, it's probably, like, the least valuable card in my hand, arguably. <laughs> well, we're not going to play Gambit, because that seems like a very good way to uh, give him a 272nd. Now, I think I'm just going to Wolf Pack him. Hits the Stuka. Pretty good. And we don't have Annihilation in hand, but hopefully we draw one soon. So again, I can just slam Gambit here, but again, I don't like Gambit for cheating out early stuff. Like, having the 272nd, it isn't about cheating out the 272nd, it's more about getting out specific cards from his hand. So getting out a Comet that I can do then double sickle, or getting out Leopold, which I can then hammer. So I don't want to just slam Gambit on curve to get out a 272nd, because, you know, if he has a Jagged Bomber, then I'd lose the game. Um, like, it pulls Leopold, and I get Jagged Bomber, and then he just kills me out on board. Um, so we're just going to start getting some damage in on this JU. Careless, do not care about that. Um, and he shouldn't have a way to get through guide, but we'll, we'll just put it like here. And then if he hits Ju into Briansk, we can finish it off with Case Yellow. It's German US ramp, all right. Um, Sky Barons in that feels all right. Um, I feel like if it's German US Ram, he's going to have like some much potentially bigger threats in the near future. On the other hand, lets us get out these 272nd more easily. And here we're just going to pass. Uh, we do actually have two Sky Barons in this deck, um, just because air units are typically the weakness to Soviet control, and I am running Triple Hammer. And the nature of the air units are, that are being run these days um, means that I don't think, um, uh, the 52k really covers it. Like, there's the Dragon Slayers, the FWs, um, a lot of five health air units. So, that is why I'm on the, uh, the uh, Sky Barons train here. Uh, I'm just going to take out the 5th Rangers. 5th Rangers is another car example of um, where Gambit works really well. Like, if you're against Frontline, the, the most expensive card in their deck is going to be a 5th Rangers or Sherman. And if you hit Sherman, it means they're not drawing two cards from it. And if you hit 5th Rangers, it means it's playing as a 4-cost, four four, or a 4-op four 4-4. Four four. Um, so, you know, either of those situations you're pretty happy with. And I think I'm going to rip the Gambit here. It's likely going to pull, like, a B-17 or something. Um, we're just going to see what it gets. Pulls a Yag Bomber. Okay. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. It means he can't Yag Bomber the 272nd. It also means he doesn't have Leopold in hand. Um, and then we will just take out the, uh, the 5th Rangers. So this does open him up to another, like, ASW patrol 
situation, he would need to kill this first. I can't think of a reasonable way for him to do that. That's going to be pretty good, and it hits the best guy in my hand. Um, Hour of Need, not as good. Ooh. I would love to get a Case Yellow down here. I think just getting the KV. And passing. Um, I believe the Hour of Need was... Well, maybe it wasn't off the Case Yellow. But we know at least these two cards on the right hand. The right side of his hand are not Leopold. And again, draw should be a bit of an issue. Just slam an ASW patrol into it. It's another ASW patrol. <laughs> okay. Um, I could actually partisan's Yegged Bomber here. Because he can't send this back to hand. Now the question is, do I want to Road to Berlin to get some healing in? Like, if I'm ever playing Road to Berlin this game, I want to play it this turn. Um, I think I probably just don't care. If anything, there was an argument to play Engineers. He's out of ASW patrols, but he might have, like, a B-17. Of course, actually, he would just be able to yank bomb with the Engineers and then B-17. So it doesn't matter, but he doesn't have it, and... We get the win in, in large part actually due to Gambit, because if I just played the 272nd, I spend more credits playing it, and then he immediately plays Jagged Bomber and returns it to hand. Um, so, yeah, it, not the uh, the flashiest or the greatest use of Gambit ever. Um, however, worked out really well, and in large part it is um, and certainly what made us win the game um, more easily. And, yeah, so this is the deck. Uh, if you want to look through it, it's got a lot of the elites um, in Soviets, as you would expect. 272nd, Winter Offensive, Naval Brigade, KV. Uh, I'm on one Partisans Red Banner. I, I know a lot of people love Partisans. They, they love double Partisans. But, I mean, if you're in a deck with double Annihilation, double Wolf Pack, triple Case Yellow, your opponent's not going to have a lot of threats on board at once. Your opponent's probably just not going to have a lot of threats because you're discarding the cards that are stuck in their hand. Um, and also, you don't want a situation where, like, it's turn two, your opponent's playing Jagro, and your hand is Partisans, Partisans, Annihilation, Case Yellow, because you can't play any of those cards, and you're going to die. Um, and then, again, double Sky Barons, just because there's so many planes in this meta right now. Plus, Triple Hammer, very useful against self-damage, aggro, pincer, um, but also really good against control. Takes out Black Watches, Schutzens, whatever you... Um, need to deal with. So all around, this is probably my favorite deck to play right now. Um, actually, scratch that, this is by far my favorite deck to play right now. I love this deck, um, and a large part of it, Gambit. I have never played Gambit, and it feels bad. I've never had Gambit in hand, and it feels like it couldn't accomplish anything. Gambit is just a very good card in this deck. Now, I, again, a lot of people are trying to use Gambit in ways I think are wrong, um, and that is why they're struggling with the card. I think Gambit is a wonderful card, and if you packed Gambit and you're feeling bad about having opened Gambit in a pack, try out this deck, try out a deck similar to this. Um, it works really well, and even if it doesn't win you the game, it feels fun. It's a fun card. Um, it's a fun card that, unlike a card like, say, Partnership, um, it's a fun card where both players have a degree of playing around it. Both players uh, can do things to manipulate how it works. Um, deciding when to play it, holding things back to play it with it. Um, yeah, the card's just an amazing card. But let's now take a look over at a uh, a ramp deck um, in, in the next game. <laughs> All right, so this is a Britain-US ramp deck. Now, to be very clear about something, this is not what I think is the best way to build Britain-US ramp. This is not what I think is the meta version, a tournament-worthy list. This is a very, very heavy list that is going to lose to aggro. Um, this is sort of more of an experiment with what cards are good in the late end of a Britain ramp by making a very heavy ramp deck and then just seeing which things are good. Um, 
It's also an experiment with the combination of ramp. I'm currently on four war machines, three hour of need, two daylight bombing. So there's a lot of payoffs for the turn two war machine. Um, and then I have two ASW patrols. Um, just because, you know, it, if you're going to be playing a ramp deck in Brothers and Arms, uh, you might as well <laughs> go all in and play a very big ramp deck, like we have seen a lot of our opponents doing so far in this video. Seen, uh, <laughs> maybe I don't even need to play an ASW patrol deck, just because everyone else is playing it. Um, okay, our opponent seems to be playing Betty. Uh, hits the supply chain. Hits the special delivery. That's not good for him. Um... Honestly, I kind of would have <laughs> liked to see him hit a Betty on that turn, just because I'm playing Supply Shortage here, no matter what. Take out the Cavalry, take out both of these next turn. Um, would not have minded killing a Betty in the process. He's going to get two more discards off these guys. Why? Okay, Genja, Naval Supply Run. Why did you play both of these and then Experimental Flight and Experimental Flight with zero credits left? Like, okay, actually, I guess you're looking for a forecast. Like, if he gets key. Now, you had Dragon Slayer in hand. Why did you play Experimental Flight? Bizarre. Um, so I'm going to start with the Wrath. Just, you know, make him spend those credits again. Now, this is a... Uh, a bit confusing to a lot of players. Um, I've seen a lot of people talking about this interaction. If you retreat Dragon Slayer, it will still come back as a veteran version. Because um, if you read the card, its deployment becomes veteran if this is the first um, Key 45 Dragon Slayer you deploy this battle. So when you replay it, there was an argument of, well, you are deploying a second. You are deploying Dragon Slayer for the second time. But it says if this is the first Dragon Slayer you have deployed. Not, is this the first time you have deployed Dragon Slayer? So, it's saying that, is this the f the first copy of Dragon Slayer? And when you return it to hand, it is the same copy. So, it does actually make sense for it to work this way. Uh, I've seen some people saying that it's a bug. It's not a bug. Uh, you can, you can ag disagree with how the card is worded and argue that it, it shouldn't work like this because it's too strong or inconsistency with other cards. I don't, I don't know. You could argue that it shouldn't work like that, but certainly if you spend time to uh, think about what the actual wording on the card is, it, it makes sense. Um, I'm very happy to see he did not have a Raiding Brigade to take out the Black Watch. Um, now there's a couple different plays here that I could go for, um, including actually Monty's Supply Shortage. Uh, <laughs> just make him overdraw. And honestly, I'm, I'm I'm tempted by this. I'm not necessarily saying that I think this is the best play, but I'm certainly tempted by this. Makes him overdraw one card, um, and then also means that he's guaranteed drawing two cards, which means he needs to hand dump. And in Betty, it's shockingly difficult to hand dump. Um, you'd think it would be easy, but it is not. <laughs> Just plays a raw supply chain, which means he's going to overdraw two cards next turn. And again, um, I, I do often talk about how overdrawing is not worth it. Um, and that's because overdrawing it only really matters if they are a combo deck or the deck is going to fatigue. Um, or the game is going to fatigue. This game might actually go to fatigue, just with the amount of um, cards he draws, the discard cards from your deck kind of stuff. There's a very decent chance that this game goes to fatigue. So that's why uh, getting him to overdraw that nonsense. Uh, pretty good. Special delivery pulls a Betty. Um. Now, what do I want to do here? I'm thinking maybe just Pioneer Company on Sane kill Betty. This is the uh, Brit ramp experience, just, like, all of your cards feel like cheating. It's a bit like Soviet control, where just, you run all of the big elites in your deck, and, like, 
Look at this. I played Mosquito into Sexton. I have Wellington Avery in hand. It just kind of feels like cheating. And at any point, I can just draw three cards with this. Um, like, I absolutely think that I could just start to go face and probably win the game. That sounds incredibly boring, though. So, here, let's just take out the board, make him overdraw again. Am I dead to Tony? Nah, dude. Nah, 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 nah. Are you gonna play around Ultra? Matsue? Weird, weird choice. Ginja? Okay. Getting scared. We have Wellington to take out Tony, even if he doesn't. Even if he doesn't trade, we can take it out. Oh, that's bad. Okay, well, we can still take it out. Um. Do I have the credits to ASW Patrol? I actually do. So if it, even if it hits the Matsue, um, we have the credits to do this. Okay, that was certainly concerning. Um, probably should have taken into account that there is a lot of Betty players who randomly run Betty with Tony. Okay, actually, Tony I haven't seen. I've seen Betty with Bolster. Um, and yeah, we're just going to die to Betty Bolster. Okay, well, um, yeah, this is what I get for having trying to have fun, uh, I suppose. Should have just played the Black Watch and gone face. <laughs> it's unfortunate. All right, so this is a uh, Japan-US ramp deck. Eh. All right, so this is another game on the Japan-US ramp deck. Um, and honestly, like, the last one, um, it was a very interesting game. Uh, and it's a fun deck, so I'm going to play it again. <laughs> um, I know I said I was going to switch, like, play one game on a bunch of different decks. I'll play a couple of different games. Um, so here we, we see where it's against um, Mobilize. So this is going to be a slightly more aggressive deck, a, a slightly more, a, a slightly faster, uh, more board-oriented deck than the, uh, the Manpower deck. Um... Now, as much as I would love to just play Hour of Need, I will. <laughs> Actually, I, I take that back. I am not afraid of this at all. I don't think... There's ways he can buff it to a, like a 3-4. I don't think he's going to have a way to buff it um, too far past that. So now we can just double cavalry to clear the front line. Honestly, I don't. I don't even like. I had alternative. Like I could have done raiding brigade trade there to, to full clear the board. Um, I do want these to die just to draw them out of my deck slightly faster. Um. Here, yeah, let's keep the credits flowing. And I, I don't want to drop Raiding Brigade yet because of Honey. Um, I'm also considering Bonsai is probably going to be a very good option in this game. Although, not really against that. Might just Kika. Like, we have such a credit lead on our opponent. We haven't even played ASW Patrol. Uh, but we have such a credit lead on our opponent. And yes, our opponent hasn't had like the greatest hand ever. Um, it's not the most aggressive thing in the world. But with four um, island defenses in this deck, we do not have to worry about our health tote. Like, yes, we don't technically have it in our hand yet, but um, just knowing that I'll be able to find them over the course of the game. Now, I should probably just trade out this guy. Um... And again, may I might have too much draw in this deck. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've not like refined these decks at all. Um, but I might just have too much draw. 
Like, the, the biggest limiting factor in this deck is not the credits necessary to play everything I want, but the hands, <laughs> the, the card slots in my uh, hand. Now, Commonwealth is going to be an important card to keep in mind, because with Island Defense, it's difficult to heal above 20. Like, you have to play Island Defenses pretty inefficiently. Um, am I about to get, like, triple honeyed or something? Um, alright, well, just, just start by gaining credit, drawing a card. Um, hopefully this does not get, um, secret operatives. Uh, then let's take out Potez, and hopefully this does not get evasive action. Yeah, against... Going HQ um, against this deck, so they can't Commonwealth you, is pretty important, but it's also pretty important to take out the things that heal off of the board. The, the deck usually doesn't run, like, any fortifications. Like, uh, maybe some naval powers, but... Um, well, if this gets hit by the second Secret Operatives... I'm going to be pretty sad. And I will push up. There is the card that retreats a unit from the front line. If the front line's now empty, summon the two mobilized guys. Um, but he's also down two Potes, so the odds he has like third Potes in that. Kind of low. Okay. Honey two, honey three, convoy. Better than some of the alternatives. Um, so I can Bonsai to clear this board. I can do Dragon Slayer Bonsai. I can start with a Kamikaze. Dragon Slayer, Bonsai, clears my own board, ends my turn, and also clears his board. We somehow have no Blitz plans. Um, Sopping Plan is going to be able to keep him off Commonwealth turn. Um, Alright, well, let's just play out all of our ramp uh, now that we're in, under no threat of getting hit by a commonwealth. Alright, well he's healed a bunch. Um... And let's just get a Cali to the front line. If he has any sort of board clear, there's a decent chance the last card in his hand is a um, Commonwealth that he can't play. He also might run Carper Bombings. He's just going to straight pass. And... Like, this is the thing. Like, the Bolster is very good in this deck, but, like, Bolster takes up a US slot, and... Why would I need Bolster? When I can just do Shiden, double attack, attack, attack. Um, that's what... I, I mean, we're not in lethal territory. This guy has still a ton of stuff on board, but... Like, why not do this? And we have, we have, again, we haven't actually played any ASW patrols this game. Maybe this deck has a bit too much ramp. Although, I don't know if that... Um, oh, there it is. 
Actually, maybe I should be getting a little concerned if he had like Monty here. Yep. And that an honorable fight indeed. Uh yeah, Japan ramp. A somewhat viable option. Alright, so uh again, here's the deck list. So got four war machines, four twenty fourth cavalry fight for the board early. The classic Japan elites, quartermasters, um, one copy of Dragon Slayer, just some big planes to get going. Then two hour of need, um, two ASW patrol, quartermasters for draw, obviously. Triple high end Sheedan, double California. Um, was, I'm still not entirely sure if it should be California, should be Fifth Rangers, because obviously we have the credits to get out the 8 8 Fifth Rangers and operate them, but it's getting just Cali to the front line to slow down decks like Pinsir. Um, worth it. And then the uh, the upper end of Japan control cards. So that is the deck. And uh, let's next take a look at another one of my OCC lists, um, the German Japan discard. All right, so here is the uh, German Japan discard deck. And I'm going to take a risk and assume this guy is some sort of Brit control, maybe Brit discard, and keep Wolf Pack. And German Japan discard, it's an archetype that is not seen any uh, tournament play, as far as I'm aware. Now, German and Japan have been paired together a decent amount, and a long, long time ago, there was some Japan German, um, very discard centric deck. Um, but what really makes Japan German work now is what Japan is bringing to the table. It is the island defenses and it is the 24th Cavalry Regiments, which are both new cards in um, Brothers in Arms. And those are just like a good package to have in any control deck. Like honestly, maybe even like a US-Japan ramp with island defenses, 24th Cavalry. It gives you early game that doubles as um, just effective units against control. It gives you early game that's not dead against control, and it gives you a ludicrous amount of healing, and that is going to allow you to do anything else you want. In this case, we are going to be trying to discard down our opponent, and then using the, uh, the pretty standard um, German... Um, ooh, it is Reichsbank Commandos. I'm just going to hold up the From the Deep. Um, and then we just use the very standard... Um, a German discard package and German elites to try to finish him off. So he does successfully play around from the deep. Um, whether that was intentional or not, uh, <laughs> who knows? But um, I think just playing the wolf pack here um, is worth it. Like. The th He's going to get commando pings over the course of the game anyways. I have island defense. I'm not too worried about just being gunned down. And I have no way of killing the Crusader. Hmm. Now here's the question. Do I go for the island defense? Or sorry, not the island defense. The, the case yellow? And if I do, do I actually maybe... No, I should case yellow this. I don't think he runs secret ops. This guy the third Reichsbank. I mean, I'm glad he doesn't have a third Reichsbank. I probably would have rather hit a British order, uh, just to try to make it more awkward for him to chain with Crusader. Okay, Convoy Drop is just going to unlock all the options. Um, we have a Maelstrom coming up. Another cup of tea. Again, doesn't really matter for the commando. Um, we'll probably get the sudden in this turn. Very good play from him, keeping this back. Um, let's just take out the sudden... Okay! Close call. That's another uh, new card. Um, Reichsbank's commander typically did not play... Um, in my opinion, he shouldn't play any countermeasures. Although, close call? Maybe. Um, I think just secret operatives, it is too... Uh, too awkward. Um, there's so many ways that it's just not going to work out, but close call maybe, because um, there's a decent amount of deployment effects that are really going to mess you up. Raid stops the Maelstrom. Um, hopefully he pings me down to 10 so I can get out the uh, island defense. Yeah, this 
should be pinging me. Yep. Oh, I would love to uh, sudden strike there, but it's statistically he's going to have another commando to play out. Um, and it could potentially play a second raid, so just going to get the healing in now. Okay, it's second honey. So as long as he doesn't have third or fourth bank, um, we don't have to be worried about Commonwealth for a bit. And third cavalry top deck is very unfortunate. Um, yeah, I am just going to play Maelstrom. It doesn't kill the Crusader, but honestly, Crusader is a bit of a liability for him at this point. Um, so it also stops him from potentially being able to trade that off in the future. Takes out one of the Commandos, takes out Pioneers. Third Honey. That's really annoying. Alright. Just going to draw through actually what looks like the rest of his deck. Not quite. Um, okay, well, whatever we do next turn, it's going to have to be a part of it. Do we top deck the 4th, 24th? That's incredibly unfortunate. Um... I guess it doesn't really matter which one we kill. He has Interception and Close Call. Okay, well, we're probably just dead here then. Um, yeah, this was just a completely bricked hand. Ooh, Desert Raid's an interesting one. Um, not that good, I don't think. Because, again, doesn't stop HQ damage. Uh, yeah, just kills me with commando pings. Well, the cards left in his hand. Probably Night Raid, Night Raid, Long Range Desert Group, Commonwealth, and uh, Second Crusader, if I had to guess. Well, uh, that was unfortunate loss, but we'll just queue up again. Um, and I'll probably keep that game in the, in the uh, video. Alright, next game is against Japan. And could be anything. I'm tempted to keep the 61st just because we are keeping the 24th. Um, don't want to get too many of those in our hand, like we saw last game, drawing all four. I swear, I draw all four of these way more often than I've ever drawn all four 32nd um, infantries. So it is Jagro. Um, hopefully we're able to pick up a sudden strike. Um, the... 24th Cavalry is, is going to let us get through most of their early game. Is this Betty? Tony Ginja. Okay. So it is Betty. Um, well, it's not the worst Ginja in the world. Didn't really make me spend any more credits. Straight honorable death on that. And that's going to pull out the Betty and Supply Chain. Okay. And that pulls out the second Betty. And second Tony. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to trade out one of these. If you didn't have the Bettys, I would have just played the 61st Infantry. Um, we are taking a ton of damage very quickly, so hopefully I draw one of the three island defenses. Draw its last. And let's see if he gets anything else off of this bolster. Okay, well, two Tonys and a bolster gun. I'm pretty happy with that. There's the island defense, which is a really good pickup. Um, I might just hip her. 34th. No, no, no. Getting the credit denial in now is really important. This is the one that's slowest to get back to the front line, and I'm looking at next turn island defense from the deep. Um, 
So I wouldn't even be able to 24th Cavalry if I, say, did Case Yellow on the Betty. And this is the same amount of damage, but for one less credit as uh, Case Yellow. I'm just dead to uh, Shenano. Although he doesn't have the credits to do that. Isolation on the Betty. It's a pretty spicy play. So let's just get our healing in. Hold up from the deep. Um, this is currently tacked a little bit heavier um, for control than I would otherwise have this deck um, because it's my OCC list. I don't believe that this should be able to attack. I'm pretty sure Isolation, since it's returned at the start of the turn. Um. Okay, actually discards the third Betty, but since he uh, has a full support line, he doesn't get it. Well, the attack bonus on the 24th Cavalry is almost never going to matter, so I'm going to play Case Yellow first in case I get a 7 strike. Discard second bolster. Okay. Reichsbank could be pretty important moving forward. Um, next turn, I'll probably start with Panzer H and look for another island defense or a 7 strike. Although this is a situation where you could like slam a key, something like that. Another supply chain. Well, that's good. I do drop to four. Well, hopefully there's no Shenano, because a unit and Shenano is guaranteed lethal. Doesn't have the credits for uh, Shiden here. Now, I have three Saturn Strikes in this deck. Okay, just plays a raw supply chain. That's kind of surprising. Hopefully this picks up island defense. Sun strike's not bad. Um, I could sudden strike signal 61st shoots and hit. Um, that's what? 11 credits. What if I do Panzer? Oh, that leaves me dead to bombing raid. Um, I think I'm just need to draw for. Uh, island defense. Oh, I no longer can, so. Let's just make the play that's not dead to Shiden, and yeah, I can attack. Let's attack this. I'm assuming I'm just dead to the bombing raid. The honor. Okay, this guy wants double bolster with the honors. Well, uh, we didn't get a win on the deck, but I also feel pretty reasonable that uh, I, I probably should have won both of those games. Um, and last but not least uh, for this video, I think so far I'm going to show off my last OCC list. And this is the, this is not a new list. Um, I, I'm just going to talk through the, the location. Um, this is not a new list at all. It's Britain German Disc Guy. This is one of the most popular decks. Um, prior to the expansion, so you might be thinking, well, why, why are you running this? Well, the deck lost a lot. It lost Seaforth, lost MI5s, lost Shelling. Um, and I saw a lot of people, oh, and research. Um, I saw a lot of people running to the hills saying, like, oh, it's dead. Um, like, it discards dead. Um, and that is just simply not the case, uh, in my opinion. You do have to run a bunch of different cards than you used to, and this is my current build of it. 
Um, and it is actually using quite a few of the new cards, actually. Um, probably more so new cards than the, the Soviet German <laughs> disc guide, actually. Um, now, we don't see any of them in my hand currently, um, although I am on Double Fog of War, which is the old lists ran 1 to 0. Um, you do sort of have to make up for losing MI5s. Um, it's a very tempting fog. I mean, it. it I kind of don't want to give him more ramp on curve, but, you know, it's German-US. Um, so the first new card we see here is the Schützen, um, which I just really love this card. It's a great way to deal with single threats in the front line. Um, decks that are getting stuff through the front line, they typically do not have more than four health. Um, so that, okay. Well, I guess he was milk talking anyways. Uh, <laughs> is this going to be like Night Hunters or some nonsense? Although maybe I'm playing this directly into a uh, Annihilation, so maybe I should play Black Watch. From the deep. Yeah, fair enough. And then to replace the Seaforths, I actually have the Green Howards, um, which I think when a lot of people saw that, a lot of people were like, oh, that card's terrible. Um, why, why would you ever run the Green Howards? And I'm going to tell you why you run the Green Howards. You run the Green Howards because actually it draws off of Schutzen, first of all. Um, second of all, a lot of other people are playing Schutzens or Pathfinders, Dragon Slayers, whatever. Um, so you draw off of all of that. And third of all, just 4 cost 3 6 guard is, is good. Like, yes, it's not as good as Seaforth, but Seaforth was basically the best guard in the game at what it did, except for maybe First Rifles. But that was also rotated because both of those cards are incredibly, incredibly insane. Um,. So I'm going to just start with Schutzen. I was tempted to go for the Annihilation, like 1 and 4 to hit Comet. Um, I'm hoping this baits out an Annihilation. And then if you just Comet's face. Um, um I'm like a little concerned about Leopold. Yeah, let's just get down to Blackwatch. Let's see what he does. Four cost Africa core. Okay. Well, I was really expecting the uh, nine cost annihilation. Um We know one of the cards in his hand is another milk truck. So he now has Comet, a random elite, and a milk truck, and three other cards. Yegged Bomber, not off the Africa core. That seems like a pretty easy annihilation target. Hits Wolf Pack. And. Do I play Air Landed Brigade? So actually, Air Landed Brigade's another new card that I have in this deck. Um, and this is uh, something I've actually talked to some people about, um, and they disagree with me on this. Um, actually, if you see Baron von Klauer's deck list in the tournament, he is not running Air Landed Brigade. I just think that a 1-4, that in combat, whether you are attacking or they are attacking you, it's a 3-4 Fury for two. This is just really good against aggro. Like, this trades with SU and self-damage. This trades with, um, like, base stat Ostracon. Like, it's just a really solid card. It trades the, out the front line against anything in Jagro. Um, now, the question is here, do I want to play it because he's playing Discard? Um, I think I'd rather just play Fortification. Just so if he Leopolds, I don't overdraw. Um... That was an incredibly fast pass. So I'm going to play it first just because you might have like Night Hunters or some nonsense. Might be a Leopold here, just was baiting out more cards. That's an Annihilation if he's deciding between Black Watch and Schutzen. And, 
Yeah, I don't see a reason not to push second Schutzen. Neither of them are in veteran form yet, and yes, Leopold returns everything to hand. Um, however, I also need to kill him faster than he can kill me with Comets. Oh, buddy. Oh, no. Oh, buddy, no. That is... Well, that's one reason to run Air Landing Brigade. Um, it, like, straight up, a lot of people don't realize that this works. Like, they just forget the ability. It's hilarious. Um, so we're definitely wolf packing. Um, definitely holding Ultra. This is definitely happening. Um, now, the Schutzen Veteran only triggers when you attack. Um, so I think I'm just going to attack into this. Might as well. I'm dealing one less damage. And we see the, he just immediately surrenders the game. Um, so yeah, let's let's do one more um, on that one. And looking at the, the other decks I have here, mid range is essentially the same. Um, this is a Japan German discard deck um, that I was testing around, and this is a um, Jaguar deck that I played in the uh, Field Marshal video, which uh, again you can be able to see on the Cards Top Deckers channel. Uh, in the near future. All right, here we are, and this is the, the reason I wanted to uh, play another game on this deck is specifically for this Green Howard Schutz in act, uh, interaction. It's really, really fun. Now, it's very simple. Like, it's incredibly straightforward. You, if You're not missing anything about it. You play Green Howards, you play Schutz, and you have Veteran Schutz, and you draw a card. It's very, very basic. But it's also incredibly satisfying, because Green Howards is just a solid card. Schutz is just a solid card. You're doing solid things, and... Why is everybody on German US ramp? Like, actually, why is every single player on German US ramp? The, the why? The, it, the deck doesn't seem that good. Am I missing something? Um, it also means that we're probably not going to be able to do the uh, Queen Howard Schutzen action on curve, because I'm assuming our opponent's going to be doing, like, ASW patrol or some nonsense. I mean, we can try if he moves up and hits this. Well, actually, Schutzen won't veteran if he moves up and hits this. Alright, Sky Barons is probably a pretty good card. Um, am I just play sincerely yours? Look for a uh, Annihilation in a couple turns. Sexton's pretty good. Get the draw out of my hand before, you know, he discards it. If he's case yellow and he did that in the wrong order. Second hour of need, okay. Um. Well, hopefully it's not B17. Um, and if it is... I'll just complain that he discarded the Sky Barons. Second Annihilation, okay. Well, Avery was probably not a card I was playing anytime soon. Um, kind of want to get the Case Yellow out, to be completely honest. ASW Patrol. There it is. Um, yeah, the the German US deck lacks so much draw, and by so much I mean basically any draw. Like I suppose you can run. <laughs> he had it and just went for the second annihilation instead. Um, you can run draw. Like it's certainly not a deck that you have absolutely no draw options in it. Like you, you can run Gathering Storms, but people just don't. 
I mean, it, it's bizarre. <laughs> I don't know why, but... Um, well, that's a good draw. I'm actually going to play this first, just in case it's like U16 to discard. What's he going to do? 989. Do not care. Tiger, I care a little bit more. Um... So I could just fog that. Yeah, I mean, there's plain fog of war here. Does put me into a uh, like a, a solved game state for a little bit. Um, and by that I mean just I I fully control the elements. So I know he draws nothing this turn. Um, I know this turn it is safe to do Black Watch Wellington attack because I know he can't do anything to get out of this. And I will play Supply Shortage here. Because now this goes down to four, he hits this, I hit this, goes to two, I can Monty here. Actually, I don't even need to Monty. I can. Well. Yeah, I will, Monty. Um, because I couldn't shoots in. Like I couldn't case yellow kill this and also kill the uh, guy. So now he has a 989 in hand. He has to choose to play it as a 3-3 into this board. Or if he passes, um, then I will simply uh, case yellow face. And like, Schutzen just also gives this deck an extra body. Um, a discard sometimes was just really easy to kill all of the units they played. And some players, well that's a, <laughs> an above average draw. Um, and some players, like sort of ways to get around that was um, just running a ton of elites. Like the 4k Spitfire, um, like you had people running Landcaster. And yeah. I don't know. Like, ASW Patrol, yes, you have 15 credits, but do your 15 credits win you the game? Like, you, no, you don't do anything with your 15 credits because you have no cards in hand. I don't understand people who play German US, but um, yeah, th these are some of the uh, decks I've been playing. Um, I encourage you to check out. Most of these were control. Um, it, there was some overlap with a lot of disc guides. This is just what I'm bringing to OCC. Um, and a decent amount of ramp with the Bren ramp, the Japan ramp. Um, we saw a lot of German ramp. Um, but, again, these are just really fun decks that I enjoy playing um, with some of the new cards. And even though, yes, all three of these decks were discard, um, all three play them very differently. And I think if you look inside them, you can see that some very creative and fun deck options, especially Gambit. Play Gambit if you have it. It's so much fun. Um, but, yeah, th th that is... Um, it for this video. Now, if you want me to do like a maybe a part two um, with looking at more aggressive decks, like maybe looking at um, Jagro, different versions of Jagro, Frontline, uh, maybe Air, th those kind of decks, uh, let me know if you want to see a part two of just looking at different decks that you can be building um, in the Brothers and Arms expansion. Let me know. And other than that, um, tune in to OCC. It's on Saturday, the uh, 15th. Um, if you're watching this before then, and if not, you can find the VOD on the official cards YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, subscribe if you haven't, and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.